shower close eyes for prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege we had to study your word. Thank you because the entrance of your word brings light to every heart. And we pray that the light of your word will shine in every one of our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. We're asking, Lord, that your glory will shine upon every heart, every minister of the gospel here, in Jesus' name. Amen. That, Lord, the message you have given us to give to the church, that message will be laid out in our hearts, in our lives. And that message will be very, very clear in our families. And then we'll be able to declare the word of God. It does save the Lord unto the people of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Be glorified, O oh Lord, as we listen to your word now. And the grace and the power and the desire to carry out the word. Grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless your people, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I need a good, good amen. amen. God bless you. You can be seated. We're back in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. We're listening to the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful Savior He is. As He is a wonderful Savior, He's a wonderful Lord. As He is a wonderful Lord, He's a wonderful teacher. A teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do, except God be with him. The miracle of changing lives. The miracle of changing hearts. And he so changes us, and he so transforms us, that then his message is laid out in our heart. And that's what we have been looking at. We have been looking at the words that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. We have been looking at the message that came out of the mouth of the Messiah. And what a message it was. 400 years had passed already. Think about that. Four centuries had passed already. And the people had not had a vision, an open vision from the Lord. A revelation from the Lord. The mind of the Lord. They had missed for those 400 years. And here comes now Christ, the Son of God. And he started by doing what no other man ever did. Because you see, in the Old Testament, you saw quite a number of miracles. But when Jesus showed up, when he appeared, he started teaching and preaching and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Turn to Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria because of those miracles. And you know when something happens that had not happened in 20 years, in 30 years, in 100 years, in 400 years, it will attract attention. And the news will spread like wildfire. And the news spread to everywhere. Here comes someone healing everybody everywhere. And teaching the people and preaching the word to the people like no other man had preached unto them. And actually when he spoke, I want you to put your finger there. I'm still coming back there. You look at John chapter 7 verse 46. John 7 verse 46. And the officers answered, never man speak like this man and you think about it a, a preacher came to town miracles that no other man did messages that no other man ever preached and his manner of life now nobody ever lived that, that they had seen everything was unique everything was special that's the reason why his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with different divers, diseases, and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them, and there followed him great multitudes of people. That's the word again, multitudes. You are wondering, why will they be using the plural this time again? Multitudes, don't you see? From Galilee, a multitude. And from Decapolis, a multitude. 
and from Jerusalem a multitude and from Judea a multitude and from beyond Jordan another multitude multitudes of people from every direction came that's what leads to Matthew chapter 5 and now in Matthew chapter 5 and seeing the multitude see the multitude ah that multitude there they are from Galilee see the multitude the multitude over here these are from Decapolis see the multitudes this one here this one is from Jerusalem see the multitudes the one here this one is from Judea and see the multitudes this one here that's from beyond Jordan and when he saw all of them together they see they strike you that although they are from different backgrounds those multitudes he preached the same message to them look at the multitude here some of you from the southwest of Nigeria some from the middle belt of Nigeria some southeast or south south or northeast or northwest or West Africa or Central Africa and then we'll be having the Congress with all the other countries East Africa and Southern Africa and then USA as well as Europe were planning their conferences and their congresses too and all those multitudes preaching the same message unto them and then he went up into a mountain and when he was searched his disciples came unto him and those disciples also they were from all these various places not just from the southwest not just from the middle belt disciples not just from the southeast disciples not just from the south south disciples both from northeast northwest west africa southern part of africa everywhere from the capolis from jordan beyond jordan from judea from jerusalem from galilee the disciples over there the ones that are disciples learners they came unto him and he opened his mouth and touched them have you found times when jesus opened not his mouth yes there are times to open your mouth there are times not to open your mouth they led him from prison to prison from judgment hall to judgment hall and they asked him questions and they led him and she before the slaughter and he opened not his mouth before the accusers he opened not his mouth before the people that were critical of him for nothing you opened not a smile your time is too precious opening your mouth to answer accusers your time is too valuable to keep on opening your mouth and answering critical people that never see any good thing coming out of nazareth your life is too short opening your mouth to every deacon hurry but when the ministry demands this is what you came for to live on earth this is why you came to reveal the mind of the father that's the time to open your mouth and that's what god told ezekiel god said ezekiel i'm going to close up your mouth shut up your mouth and then i'll make your tongue a cleave to the roof of your mouth and then when i have a message to give you i will open your mouth and you will declare it to the people let's learn as leaders let's learn as ministers there are times to keep quiet you open not his mouth but when the ministry demands it when your calling demands it when the work is ahead of you and you see those disciples there you see those learners there you see the multitudes there you see the people there and they're waiting for the bread of life and they're thirsty they want to drink the water of life you open your mouth and you declare the word of god unto them you open his mouth saying blessed at the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven he announced immediately said i came for the kingdom the kingdom and therefore his very first announcement is saying the most important is the kingdom the kingdom of heaven and i'm opening the way opening the door and here is the way you are going to enter in be poor in spirit and then blessed are they that mourn 
for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, the lowly, the humble, the gentle, the submissive, and the unruffled, and the unresisting. Blessed are they, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst at righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In Psalm 24. Psalm 24, I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity. Not sworn deceitfully. Then we're reading from Revelation chapter 22. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Revelation chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 3. And there shall be no, no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servant shall serve him. And they shall see his face. Who are those? The pure in heart. They shall see his face. And his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither the light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Will you be there? Yes. Praise the Lord will be there. We're talking about the purity of heart, the blessedness of purity of heart. The heart is a center of life. Out of that, not just clean up the outside, the heart and how they do. And then our feet, not the left, out of the good treasure of his heart. Bring it forth that which is good is a heart. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And you see the importance then that it's not the hand, it's not the feet, it's not just the mouth, it's not your head, it is the heart. That's why the Lord told Samuel when he went to the house of Jesse. In 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor on his stature, on his height, on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart do you understand then head religion will not take us to heaven is heart righteousness head religion having knowledge of divine revelation head religion having knowledge of christian doctrine or hand religion full of good activities and christian service neither head religion nor hand religion can take us to heaven, can make us to see God. Not all those things are not enough, except there is heart righteousness. Not head religion, heart righteousness. Not hand religion, heart righteousness. In Psalm 15, reading from verse 1. Psalm 15, verse 1. Lord, who shall abide in the tabernacle? Who shall dwell in the holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. That's what it takes. That's why we're looking at the message the blessedness of purity of heart. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, 
the possibility of being pure in heart it must be possible it must be possible if it were not possible nobody will see god nobody will be in heaven because what it takes to see god is purity of heart and if it were not possible for anybody to be pure in heart nobody then will be able to see god heaven will be empty and vacant but because we know that heaven is not empty heaven is not vacant there are people that become pure in heart the possibility is there the possibility of being pure in heart number two the provision for our purity of heart what it demands he also provides what he commands he also provides he grants us the way with them how we can make it the provision for our purity of heart number three the promise for the pure in heart the promise for the pure in heart number one the possibility of being pure in heart come back to matthew chapter 5 verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god as it happened to all the people can we point to one two three four five people that received it before if it has happened to all the people we know that they are men of like passions as we are they are just facing they face the same trials and the same challenges that we face and yet it was possible for them if it was possible for them it's possible for you and you will, it will happen to you in second kings chapter 20 second kings chapter 20 verse 3 i beseech thee o lord remember now how i have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart this man was sick and the lord sent isa the prophet to him you tell ezekiah set your house in order you will die and the man was not ready to die and then he went to god in prayer and there is what he was pleading in prayer the spirit of heart i beseech thee o lord remember now how i have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart let's reason together because the lord G the lord himself almighty said come let us reason together now a man was about to die and he wanted to pray so he will not die and the prophet was not even waiting behind to pray for him he just came in swiftly Ezekiel the king here am i the lord has sent me to you said to us in order you are dying you will not live bye bye thank you and the prophet did not even wait for a question the prophet did not even wait for any discussion any counseling isn't there an alternative can't i do something can't i be free from this no question the man was already going and the man said all right i understand go your way and the man was going to pray on the basis of that prophecy that came to him how will he pray if he prayed with insincerity that will knock him out because he was to die if he prayed with untruth falsehood it was finished because he was about to die if, if, if you know people when they're about to die and the doctor tells them and he says papa i can't deceive you they are seen on you now with a medical knowledge medical science i cannot give you six hours you're going you're gone now this is not a doctor this is a medical this is a prophet and the prophet and everybody knew isaiah it was a prophet that never missed his target when he said this that was it set your house in order you will die what kind of prayer do you think he will pray do you think he'll go to god and be playing games and be uttering something that is untrue and be saying something that god will say ah i said you are going to die and what you are telling me is not true you will die the man was telling the truth he said oh god you see i'm going to die remember remember who i am i have walked before you 
in truth and with a perfect heart and i have done that which is right that which is good in thy sight and ezekiah wept so and it came to pass for before isaiah was gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the lord came to him saying turn again and tell ezekiah the captain of my people thus says the lord the god of david thy father i have heard thy prayer that man was pure in heart because if there was any lie any falsehood in what he said the prayer will not just be answered like that there are people that had gone before us and they were pure in heart uh, you understand you you know sometimes uh, when you have some real real challenges some of us will say when we were bachelors and spinsters and we didn't have husband no children it was it was easy to be pure in heart but now there's a wife there and sometimes it's when the husband wants to stand the woman wants to sit down and when the husband wants to talk is the time the woman is not in the mood of talking now and it's sometimes when you are just excited coming back home and you have a nice story to tell it's when the wife is saying well i'm having this uh, problem with uh, you know this uh, our child and you don't want to talk about that now some people feel that when you are married how can you be pure in heart look at Ezekiel. not only that some people feel you know if we're not leaders in the church it will be so easy to be pure in heart i remember that's what they say not me i remember they say they remember i remember when i was just a child of god simple i come to church not leading us fellowship not leading any kind of any anybody but no since i became a leader and this one said don't sit down there and then that's exactly what we're going to sit and don't stand up there then they, they stand up uh, don't let me see you do that that's exactly what they are going to do at this time now in leadership it's difficult for a leader to be pure in heart i didn't read that in my bible ezekiah was a leader not a leader over a house fellowship not a leader over his, over a, a tribe in israel over many many people and yet he was pure in heart don't tell me that because you are a pastor and because you have all these various kinds of people in your church that the administration of the church the work in the church and the different sections of the church the mature and the immature the young and the old the incorrigible and the obedient because they're in your church it becomes impossible for you to be pure in heart you can be pure in heart as a leader and you will be pure in heart Ezekiel was a leader Ezekiah was a king and yet even in the midst of the administration of that of that nation in the midst of all the oppressions of the policies of his government he still kept his heart pure don't allow church organization church administration don't give that as an excuse and say that is why I cannot be pure in heart Ezekiah said Lord remember how i have worked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and i've done that which is good in thy sight and then the lord told i shall turn again and turn around and tell ezekiah the captain of my people thus says the lord god the god of david thy father i have heard thy prayer i have seen thy tears behold i will heal thee on the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the lord and i will add unto thy days how many years 15 years because he spoke the truth in prayer lord you know my heart i followed you with a perfect heart we look at acts of the apostles acts of the apostles chapter 15 verses 8 and 9 acts of the apostles chapter 15 verses 8 and 9 and god which knoweth the hearts bear them witness giving them the holy ghost even as he did unto us 
and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, as we read those two verses, who are the people here that Peter was talking about that he purified their hearts by faith? You know, he's talking about Cornelius and the house of Cornelius. And you know, he's also talking about themselves because he bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, us and them, us apostles, us the 120 that gathered in the upper room, and them in the house of Cornelius. He gave this witness, purifying their hearts by faith. Let's analyze now. Who are these people? John was there. And this John, on the, that he is in the upper room. And James too. James died before this, chapter 15. But when he gave them the Holy Ghost in chapter 2, James was still there. Now, who was John? John was a man that had a boisterous spirit, an aggressive spirit. A thunderous spirit that will say, well, call down fire on them. Who was James? James was his brother. They were together with that kind of hot temper. And if Jesus wanted to pass through somewhere, and they will not allow him, say, leave us alone. Well, call down fire on them. And these same people that were so thunderous, boisterous, violent, wanting to call down fire, God purified their hearts. And now you find John saying, love one another. God loved us first. And we ought to love John. Talking about love. Here is Peter now. What's, who is Peter? Peter is the one that wanted to be at the center of everything. Even beyond the Lord. And when the Lord made any revelation unto them, he'll hold on to Jesus like this. I mean, when you think about Peter, the audacity and the courage, but the wrong kind of courage, and the self-confidence, and the boasting, it will not happen to you. And Jesus had to say, get me behind me, Satan. And Peter now was one of these people giving them what he gives us, purifying their hearts by faith. Now let's, we have talked about us, the apostles, us. Peter, James, John purifying their heart that all that hot temper is taken away all that disagreeable spirit is taken away purifying their hearts how about them? Cornelius do you know Cornelius? so German you know, uh, the pastor all this pure, pure, pure pure heart you are talking about uh, pastor our training as police, our training, as soldier men, purity of heart. If you talk to all these your young young people, they, they they are gentle by nature, and they normally train them to be gentle. But we, it will take supernatural grace, power, because we are trained to be aggressive. We are trained. They put fire in us. And we have a fighting spirit. And even though we are saved, our, our salvation is different from the salvation of the other people. Nothing like that. Even Cornelius and his household purifying their hearts by faith. If you are going to get to heaven, whether you are a soldier or you are a policeman or you are a trader or you are a psychologist or you are whatever you are, if you are going to get to heaven, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And here is Cornelius, what excuse will you have? He was the leader, the captain of the battalion. And yet, they get, he had the same Holy Ghost. And his heart was purified as the hearts of all the other people. That's why we are preaching. And that's why in our church, we don't have a separate doctrine for teachers a separate doctrine for soldiers a separate doctrine for police people a separate doctrine for politicians 
a separate doctrine for women, a separate doctrine for men. The same doctrine, the same purity of heart, and the same qualification if we're going to get to heaven, purifying their hearts by faith. And it's better you come to this understanding that God is no respecter of persons. And if you came here so you can get to heaven, this is what it takes to get to heaven. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And uh, our overseers, with all due respect, have you come to the situation in your church where there are some people you avoid in your church? And uh, if so and so has done this, you know, overseer, this is what we normally should do. This is the standard. This is the requirement. And then somebody comes to whisper in your ears, overseer, be careful. That man, although he's a member of our church, but he is a military man. And so if he does anything wrong, and if there is no purity of heart, be careful. just avoid him, just avoid him, just, you know, just go this other way. Because that man, you might get into trouble because of who he is. If he's a member of your church, you have to follow the same standard. If he's a member of your church, you have to do the same thing that you do to everybody. And you have to follow the same word of God. Because God is no respecter of persons. You stand upon the unchanging word of God. And if you have to help them, that they get to life eternal, then you maintain that same standard, salvation from sin, and freedom from sin, and sanctification, holiness of heart and life. Because it's possible, by the grace of God, to turn anybody and everybody around, sanctifying, purifying their hearts by faith. First Peter chapter 1, verse 22. First Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Seeing that ye have purified your souls. Again, the question is, who are these people? Souls purified. Hearts purified. Who are they? Go back to verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, Elege, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Are you learning a lesson here? All these people in the various regions and various areas, different places and different circumstances. Are they strangers scattered about in Pontus? Are they in another territory, Galicia? Are they in another place, Cappadocia? Are they in another place, Bithynia? Are they in another place, Asia? All these people, Peter, by the inspiration of the Spirit of God, testified and said that your hearts have been purified. Your souls have been purified. Don't tell us then that because of the province we live in and because of the territory we're coming from, and because of the peculiarity of the land in which we live that's why we cannot be pure enough there are people that have lived in places similar to the place you are living whether it's cappadocia or asia or bithynia or galicia or pontius they have been there and the lord purified them and it says now you love one another with a pure heart fervently it tells us in first thessalonians chapter 2 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, 
which tries our hearts which tries our hearts for neither at any time used we flattering words as ye know nor a cloak of covetousness god is witness nor of men sought we glory neither of you nor yet of others when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of christ but we were gentle among you please talk you know and sometimes when you read all the scriptures and you know them even up head and you can quote them without even reading the bible you don't think about them now when you think about this man in verse 7 when he says but we were gentle among you even as a nursing mother as a nurse cherishes her children that's all who was changed to become paul you know you know paul before he was born again he had a murderous spirit that he is kill if you can't kill maim them cut off their leg destroy them it was like there was a kind of a machine gun in his brain and, and he couldn't stay quiet he'll get up run here and he, he didn't care for man or woman he himself said so get you to that house are you a christian are you following christ come on here and whisk them out physically and violently and then he imprisoned them he says stand here blaspheme now the name of christ say i don't believe in that christ he said i compelled them to blaspheme a person like that a violent character a difficult character a murderous character and it's almost an insane person he took the religion of the jews beyond any other person a person that had that kind of nature that kind of habit that kind of lifestyle and he had the papers the documents from the authorities and he went everywhere a person like that now becoming like a nursing mother very gentle and very soft what a change that's the change the grace of god can make in a man uh, you know the you know, sometimes it's like uh, some people who are coming from some backgrounds they carry that background into the christian life and then they'll be they'll be giving us excuse they say you know pastor <laughs> just be thanking god for me if you know what i was at least now i am not smoking anymore i'm not drinking anymore at least now ah, pastor thank god i can sit down like this 30 minutes i can leave one week without going to another woman outside pastor in fact if you knew me you'll just be praising god that you have a good member of your church because all the other things you see that you are talking about that you are complaining about i know myself i about saw see the change see the transformation and he said we were gentle among you he said look at silas he wasn't as bad as i was but silas is not more gentle than i am look at timothy even in his timidity he is not more gentle than i am all of us were now as gentle as nursing mothers and then he said so being affectionately desirous of you we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of god only but also our own souls because you are dear unto us for ye remember brethren our labor and travail for laboring night and day because we would not be chargeable unto any of you we were we preached unto you the gospel of god and ye are witnesses and god also how holily and justly and unblameably we behave ourselves among you that believe purity of heart it's possible i said it's possible purity in our conscience purity in our affection purity in our will pure heart implies a pure mind a pure conscience a purified affection pure submissive will to the truth of the word of god and to the righteousness of god in the inner man 
in the inward parts. Point number two. How did they have it? How did it happen to them? The provision. God's provision. Under the old covenant as well as in the new covenant. God's provision for our purity of heart. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, reading verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The provision is there. But we have to make use of that provision so that this purity of heart will be your experience and it will be i said it will be how does it happen what does god do deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 and the lord thy god will circumcise thine heart that's enough the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all that thou mayest live. The Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. And would you look up here for a moment as we look at God. We know what God can do. Let me give you something that appears negative. What I mean, a negative miracle. But it shows you that God has power to change man and to change any of his creatures. Then I'll give you a positive miracle in the Bible. You think about Nebuchadnezzar. He was a king. And the Lord threatened him, predicted, prophesied. That because of the way he was, what he was doing, that the Lord was going to change him. He will be driven away from among men. And then eventually the day came and the Lord performed that miracle. And he turned his heart to that of an animal. And then was driven away from the community of men. And he ate grass. And he didn't think there was anything wrong with eating that grass. And then he was away like that. Seven seasons passing over him. God can make a change. Look at that miracle. If God can perform that miracle, why can't God perform this other miracle? It will circumcise our heart. That this sin in the heart that makes us not to love God with all our heart, all our soul and all our mind. He says he'll perform the miracle and circumcise us. Another miracle. Here was an animal. Now we have talked about God changing the man to an animal. And when he wanted to change him back again, came back to his senses. But now let's take an animal, the ass of Balaam. If God can do this, what can't God do? He can change our nature. He can change our soul, our mind. He can change everything within us if we allow him. Now, Balaam was riding his ass. And the ass saw the angel. That's a miracle. Animals normally don't see the invisible, the angels. Even those of us who are here, how many have seen angels? I don't mean in painting. I don't mean in picture. I don't mean in dream. I mean face to face. And then the, that animal had enough sense. She know I should not go along. And this is an ass. The dullest. The most stupid of all animals. And then when he bent this way, the angel went there again. Then he went the other way. And then Balaam beat him. And then God opened his mouth and he spoke distinctly and clearly and with understanding and asked Balaam question why are you beating me and Balaam replied and the ass understood that reply so it's not just talking it's not just hearing it's comprehension and then he replied Balaam again ah uh ah -uh, God who can change an animal like that in a moment of time and turn him to the point he could understand speech 
and could speak with that same speech, can't God take a child of God who is already saved, already born again, if you allow him and then so touch you and so mold you and so transform your life that he will give you a circumcised heart. Now, let's take another miracle. You understand, lions have their nature. And it's the nature of lion. If he sees meat, whether it is human meat or animal meat, whether it is the meat of a rabbit or the meat of an eagle or the meat of a human being, if the lion sees that, the normal nature of that lion is to rush at that meat, tear it into pieces, kill it and eat. And all lions have that nature. And there were lions in the den. And they brought Daniel, just one, one man. And they put that Daniel into the den of many lions. Not for five minutes, not for one hour, for the whole night. And they couldn't, their nature was suspended, was changed, that they couldn't eat up this Daniel. Uh -uh. If God can change the violent, murderous nature of a lion all through the night like that, and they couldn't do anything to Daniel, you are a human being. It's not so hard to change your nature, to change your attitude, and to change your life. If God has performed all these miracles on the nature of men and animals, if you allow him, he will do something today. He can. And he says, the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Don't give us any excuse anymore. It's the way my father was. It's the way my mother was. It's because of my training. It's because of my circumstance. It's because of my environment. Environment determines character. Don't tell us that anymore. Environment determines behavior. Don't tell us that anymore. If you are a child of God and you hold on to the promise of God, the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live it will happen Amen. we're told in Ezekiel Ezekiel chapter 36 Ezekiel chapter 36 I'm reading from verse 25 Ezekiel 36 verse 25 then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean and from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you actually Ezekiel was talking to the children of Israel and they had gone into captivity and they were affected by the pollutions and the idols of Egypt idols of Syria everywhere they were scattered and the Lord said a miracle is coming that even though you have been contaminated and polluted defiled with all these uncleanness everywhere you have gone I will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean and ye shall be clean Amen. now when God decides to wash something clean you know when you read the scriptures what gives you faith is other things that God had done normally when we talk about cleaning about washing we normally think about our clothes and you remember Jesus went to the Mount of Transfiguration and he took with him Peter, James, and John. And while he was there, he was praying. Please don't forget that. While he was praying, then the disciples, they looked at his clothes. They're just normal clothes. He didn't bring the clothes from heaven. It was normal clothes that he had over here on earth. And it was as normal as the clothes of all the rest of them. But as they looked at him, on that mount of transfiguration, we are told the clothes became so white as no dry cleaner. 
as no washer could make it clean or white on this earth if god could do that that in a moment of time that cloth became so white that never seen anything as white as that before look at this one as a cleanse in a moment of time that cloth and they could see isn't that a symbol a parable isn't that an encouragement for you and for me then i will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean and from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you that's the almighty god saying he will do that verse 26 in your heart also i'll do that and settle it also this another sin i will do a new heart also will i give you a new heart also will i give you well you understand what he's saying normally our heart is in internal part when you go through life normally you are influenced by the things you see by the things you hear by the people you associate with if you are being a tender person a gentle person remember it's not your hand that is gentle it's your heart that is gentle it's because the gentleness is in the heart that's why your hands appear gentle you cannot slap somebody your hand is as good as the hand of the other fellow that can slap another one it's because you have a difference in the hearts that's why the hands do different things but it's not the hand really because your heart is gentle because your heart is humble because your heart is tender that's why your hands appear gentle the mouth now i speak you speak he speaks she speaks they speak now the reason why they speak bad language is not because they know too many words from the dictionary those same words they use abusive words we know them too we know the same grammar the same vocabulary that they know our head might even be the same as to the language as to the grammar the reason why we don't say them is not because we don't know them it's our heart our heart does not approve of that vocabulary and our heart directs our brain what to bring out of the dictionary in our brain it's not because we don't have the words in our mind in our in our brain we have them we don't choose them because we have a different heart now take somebody who has been with people he has been influenced by their action by their character by their behavior by their kind of hooliganism and now the lord says i understand your problem even if we teach you the whole bible for one whole year your heart is still going to be the same what i'm going to do is this i will give you another heart the one you have now you cannot operate it you cannot operate with it it's so it's so weak and it's leaning towards a particular direction and the vocabulary you have stored inside that brain inside that heart you cannot if you don't have another heart there's no way you can't match up with the people that are going to heaven so i will not even say i'm going to renew this one i will not even say i'm going to whitewash this one i'm going to give you a brand new heart a new heart also will i give you a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you and heart of flesh if you had a car before and the engine was uh, making some kind of funny funny sounds and then you go to the mechanic and you say can you help me work on this vehicle this car and he says bring the key you give him the key puts it on and he begins to hear some funny funny sounds he says sir, please wait wait for me in my workshop he wants to drive around a little bit and then he drove around and he came back and he said sir we have to remove the engine there's no way we can just service this scene and just remodel it we just have to remove the engine completely and then you give him money 
he takes away the old engine and then he brings in brand new engine he fixes it up and was little cleaning and all that and the body working on the body panabitching whatever he says that's your key and you enter in i'm telling you that car the sound will be different the motion will be different and the jerky you used to have before everything is gone because there's a new engine if you will come to the lord and respect the promise of the lord and he says i will give you a new heart the old heart stony heart jerky heart undependable heart the furious heart i'm going to take that away and i will give you an heart of flesh you will do it and this is the time the time has come he will do it for you he will do it for every one of us i come to point number three the promise for the pure in heart the promise for the pure in heart matthew chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 8 matthew 5 verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god and when you think about the privilege we have or the privilege that is waiting for us to see god now if somebody told you that uh, the president of america is coming to our country and they are shortlisting some names of the people that will see the president of america and it's not just to see physically like this yes that will happen but uh, they are prepared some kind of privileges they are making this available for some selected few in our country if they can just see him and they say all it takes is you take this form fill the form and then what you see in the form this condition this condition this condition and uh, they tell you the steps you take to meet those conditions if you're like the average person you say ah, this is simple if all these benefits are there and i will see him or oh, i will do that you'll take some little time you look through that form you'll feel the form and then all the various little little conditions there you, you might want to fulfill those conditions just to see the president in this world how about the almighty god to see god here on earth see him at the time of prayer you have any challenge any difficulty god appears like this he said i promised you if you appear in heart you will see me and you see him and the devil is trying to harass you and torment you and he's trying to trouble you you kneel down like this and god shows up i said if you love me and you keep my word I and my father will come and manifest ourselves I told you unto you look at all the privileges of seeing God and then at the time you are going to leave this world if uh, it's not the time of the rapture when everybody is going well it may be let's say in an hospital bed maybe you are sick and this one is crying my head doctor my intestine i cannot breathe i can can you not help me and while you are there about you go here god shows up and he says my son i told you if you are pure in heart you will see me now you're sick and then he takes all the pain away and he discusses with you and then you are talking to the people that were around your spiritual bed there and you're saying well hold on because i see god now and i see the angels of heaven when you see him like that what a joy that you are different from all the other people but if you are just a church man when difficulties come you don't see god in the time of sickness you don't see god in the times when the world all the world is against you you can't see god you can't see angel you can't see christ and you are left alone all by yourself to live a miserable life a hard life and then when that time comes to leave to leave this world you can't even see god what a miserable life that was but he from this morning and god says blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god john wesley when i was going to die and then he said 
the greatest and the best that could ever happen is that you see God and it's like he saw the invisible with a smile on his face he went to heaven the Moody wanting to die he said is this what they call death glorious day and day of coronation and that's why he went another one was going to die he said I see them I see them myriads of angels that's how to die when you appear in heart at the time when it matters most then you are able to see God that's what's important in Job chapter 33 verse 25 and verse 26 Job 33 verse 25 his flesh shall be fresher than the child's he shall return to the days of his youth he shall pray unto God and it will be favorable unto him he shall see his face with joy he shall see the face of the Lord with joy what a glory what a glorious thing for he will reign down to man his righteousness numbers numbers chapter 20 chapter 12 reading from verse 5 and the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam and the both came forth and he said hear now my words if there be a prophet among you I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream my servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house with him will I speak mouth to mouth how about that that even in this life when people are criticizing you and they are complaining about you that God himself shows up to defend you and then he says shut up don't talk about my servant like that it's not so it's not like you are talking with him will I speak mouth to mouth even apparently not in that speeches and the similitude of the Lord shall he see shall he behold wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses you see that and that's the privilege we have blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God Exodus chapter 33 Exodus chapter 33 verse 11 the Lord spake unto Moses face to face face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend what a glorious privilege then and it's for the pure in heart Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10 Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10 and there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses whom the Lord knew face to face that's the reason why the Lord is telling us that we need to be pure in heart so we'll have this privilege of seeing the Lord it tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 Hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 14 the privilege of seeing the Lord follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. First John chapter chapter three. First John chapter three, verse two and verse three. Beloved, now are we the are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as he is on that glorious day when the Lord shall return we shall see him as he is and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure Job chapter 19 in Job chapter 19 reading from verse 25 Job 19 verse 25 through to verse 27 for I know that my redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth 
and though after my skin warms destroy this body yet in my flesh shall I see God what a glorious hope what a glorious expectation in my flesh I will see God whom I shall see for myself mine eyes shall behold him and not another though my rays be consumed within me brothers and sisters will see the Lord and if we're going to see him we need to be pure in heart blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God I believe you want to be among that number it will happen let's rise up and talk to the Lord and tell him Lord thank you for your promise thank you for your promise blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God I want to see God here on earth at a time of prayer at a time of any problem at a time of temptation at a time of trial at a time when there are challenges in life I want to see God and blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see the Lord and then when it comes so time to leave this world to go to heaven and to be there forever and ever what a glorious hope that we will see the Lord why don't you pray and tell the Lord Lord I want to see you Lord I want to see you Lord I want to see you purify my heart purify my heart yes he will do it let him do it for you said a new heart will I give you a new spirit will I put within you and that's what he takes that's what he takes that's what he takes so that you'll be able to see the Lord on that final